not matter, but good afternoon once again, and I now welcome you to our final week of our webinar series with the theme, The Muses of the Science. Um, we are your hosts, hey, Marian Cuenco, and me, Clancy Datoy, for today's webinar series with a topic of Embracing Feminine Diversity, Breaking Down Barriers as a Modern Day Filipina. And see, I am thrilled for today's talk. Are you too? Well, very much, Marianne. Now, I know you guys are also excited for the guest that is joining us today, as she is very well known and as well as experienced, especially in the world of pageantry. If you guys are alive and kicking, kindly chat in the chat box with some hearts. If you guys are finally ready to meet our guest speaker, kindly chat with some fire emojis. All right. Okay, now I see their um, emojis in the chat box. Now, let's not delay this any further and let us now meet and welcome the guest that will be joining us today. A lady who I'm sure many of you can't wait to listen to. Therefore, we request that you lend your ears today. So she started her career as a TV host and radio jockey, making the natural transition to writing for newspapers and magazines to running her own business as a diet and fitness coach and a public speaker. So she is currently completing her degree in health sciences while working with the Bloomberg Newsroom. Allow me to welcome our speaker, Miss Cebu 2016, Rain Balja. Hello, Clancy, and hello, Marianne. Thank hello, you both me. very Welcome. much for the warm introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me clearly and properly. If you can just give me a thumbs up reaction, and then I will transition to my PowerPoint presentation. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I am now just going to share my screen of this wonderful PowerPoint that I have prepared today. <laughs> now, I won't be able to see the chat box while this PowerPoint is being shared, so please keep that in mind. But I would still love for everyone to participate while I am presenting. So there are some points in the presentation where um, I will be interacting with you. So I would love to get your feedback and you can share that in the chat box or you may unmute yourselves and you'll know exactly when that is as I go through the presentation. So without further ado, I will now begin. So we're here today to embrace feminine diversity and the modern day Filipina. We're breaking down some barriers. Now, before we can break some barriers down, I would just like to know from everyone, what is beauty to you? What is your definition of beauty? So if anyone would like to share that in the chat box or unmute themselves, you are welcome to share your thoughts to me. No one has anything to say about what they think beauty is. Oh, okay. <laughs> feeling? Okay, beauty is a feeling. I see that in the chat box. Inner beauty? Okay. Subjective? Okay, yes. Beauty is inside you? Okay, I like these responses. Now, I will provide a definition from the Oxford Dictionary. And what they say is that beauty is a combination of qualities such as shape, color, or form that pleases the aesthetic senses. So these are the things that we normally see, like a beautiful woman, she's a charmer, and so on and so forth. But in my personal opinion, which seems to be the shared opinion as to those who responded in the chat box, beauty is subjective, it's relative, and it belongs to the eyes of the beholder. Therefore, what is beautiful to one person may not be beautiful to all people and vice versa. So everyone might have their idea of this is the beauty defined by the norms of society, but it may not apply to all people. And the reason why I say that beauty does not apply to all people is because of flaws. No one is perfect. 
Someone might find a mole, a beauty mark on someone's face beautiful, while someone else might not find a dimple or that mole as beautiful. The same goes for freckles. Some people have a preference in height or certain shapes and sizes. So no one is perfect. And because of this diversity in physical features, that's what makes things beautiful. No one is perfect. We all have our flaws. And sometimes these imperfections can actually make you strong beautiful and confident. And I will explain exactly why. With myself, I have my own imperfection, which is my skin, my integumentary system, where I have eczema and pityriasis. So sometimes when the weather gets too hot, my skin gets patchy. Sometimes it gets really, really patchy. And I've seen dermatologists about this problem and sometimes they give me medication that doesn't go right where they burn my skin. And then I have a bigger problem after that. Other times I eat food that doesn't agree with me and then my skin will flare and I have these reactions. So I'm not a perfect person. This is something that I have to live with. And the way that I have learned to manage my flaws is through diet and fitness not just for the physical, but also for the mental, emotional, and even spiritual health, because it affects your stress management, the lifestyle that you want to live, the kind of environment and people you surround yourself with do affect how you feel about your flaws and imperfections. So this is how I manage mine. And because I've learned how to management, manage it, you don't see it when I'm modeling for things like this. You don't realize that, oh, she actually has a skin problem. And the reason why is because I have learned to embrace my imperfections and project what are my strengths in order to have a balance in my life. So that is where your true power is deeper than beauty on a physical sense. Cleopatra knew this because she could seduce a man at 20 paces without revealing an inch of her flesh. And how was Cleopatra able to do this, you ask? With her mind. Your true power is in your mind because desire begins in the mind. How you look at someone, how you project yourself, what is your posture, how you carry what you're wearing, how you speak and what you say. What you have inside your brain is your most powerful weapon and it is your asset. And I'm sure you know this by now because you are psych department students. So when it comes to your life, like what Yoko Ono said, art is my life and my life is art. So you can make your life whatever you want it to be. You can let your flaws destroy you and let it be your weakness, or you can turn it into a strength because you have found some willpower inside of you to make your life more meaningful. So I will now introduce a little bit about myself to give you an idea of who I am and then to bring everything together in a big picture. My life began as an artist where I would express a lot of my frustrations through art, where I would be painting with acrylic or watercolor. Sometimes I'd be sketching things that I don't understand in order to get a deeper comprehension in what I'm learning. And then I realized that art isn't just through painting, but it's also through music. You can write a song where you can express yourself and feel empowered. When you're having a bad day, you put on your favorite song, you start dancing and singing, and oh my goodness, my day is beautiful. So that's also something that's a part of you, your likes and dislikes. But aside from this, I'm also an athlete. I've participated in rock climbing, volleyball, basketball, soccer, and even the track and field team at Cebu Doctors University's Rehabilitative Science Department. So I express my frustrations in sport and relieve myself from all of my stress. And then because I'm a very good public speaker, I've also gained a career as a television and event host and also as a radio jockey. But I'm also a model and product endorser this is my mom here in these pictures with me. And in 2016, I gained the title as Miss Cebu, and it was my first and only beauty pageant I participated in. It was a three-month competition. I was 18 years old, and after my 19th birthday, I earned this title 
And I was so grateful with it that I used my title to speak up for projects and causes that mattered, such as my own weightlifting charity project, working with the MCWD, and my own marine free diving cleanup project. So as a social innovator, conservationist, and naturalist, I use my platform to help unite different areas of the community and speak up for those who don't have a voice. And I used it more, this voice and this wit, to empower future generations for the betterment of our society through writing and being a columnist for magazines and newspapers in the Philippines and even in Japan and in the Americas. And then I became a coach and public speaker where I conduct workshops, not just in the Philippines, but also in Japan and internationally in Europe and the Americas. And I'm an entrepreneur where I have my own business, where I coach people one-on-one -on -one and I coach people in groups. And you can learn more about what I do on my website. But this is who I am. I started my career as a print ad and runway fashion model. Then I became an event and TV host and radio jockey. Then I wrote for newspapers and magazines, owning my own business and coaching people for diet, fitness and public speaking, and then using my platform for social causes and now I'm honing my knowledge and skills, earning my undergraduate degree at the University of South Australia while working for Bloomberg's New Bloomberg Newsroom's Tokyo Bureau. And when I'm not doing all of these things, you can find me weightlifting, free diving, rock climbing, or doing some yoga. Because all of these different things are what make me who I am. These are my interests. These are my likes and dislikes. These are the things that help me manage my life to be who I am. And that's something that I want to share with you all today. You can define what beauty is based on what you like and dislike. You don't have to follow the norms of what society sets. You don't have to fit yourself into a stereotype or certain schema that society wants you to be. You can be anyone you want to be because as a human being, we evolve. So when it comes to social media, society, bullies, haters, parents will always be concerned. That's how you know they love you. And then society will always have something to say. And you might as well give everyone something to talk about by living your fullest life. Because experiences are wisdom. That's what makes you special, and that what, that's what makes you an expert in your respective field. So break the stereotypes, overcome the obstacles, unlock your truest potential, and achieve your dreams. Because we all know that one day we're going to die. So how would you like to be remembered? What legacy would you like to leave behind? And that's where, just like Barbie, you can be anything that you want to be. Maybe you want to be a race car driver today, but then take up some cooking classes later. Or maybe you want to be a ballerina. You can be anything you want to be. As long as you believe in yourself and you have the capacity and resources to pursue what you want. Because again, it's your life. Now with society, they're always going to try to try to put a label. You're mestiza. You're morena, you're chinita, and okay, I am this, that's what you say that I am, but you are uniquely beautiful in your own way. Some people might call me mestiza, but I don't really think I am because my grandmother is Chinese, my grandfather is Spanish, my mother is Filipina, my father is Croatian, but I was born in Australia, so I'm really just halo halo. I'm an askal. I'm kind of sago ka ayok ng dugo. And I have embraced that. And I'm like, bahala, I will just live my life because this is who I am. I know what my capacity is. And that's where in your life, you need to experience things in order to grow so you know who you are. And now I will present to you something about figure because a part of knowing who you are, aside from experiences, is understanding your body shape so that you can dress appropriately for your shape, your size, your height, and your personal preferences. Maybe you don't like a certain color or maybe a certain color doesn't complement your skin. So understand your figure, understand your complexion. And when it comes to dressing up, you don't have to follow the trends or what is in style. Do what suits your body type and your beauty. Wear what is comfortable for you. Wear what is within your budget. 
And also, dress appropriately. Don't wear winter clothes when outside the weather is 38 degrees Celsius. My God, musingut juga ana. And also, what would you like to be known as? So sexy is not about the clothing. It is everything to do with your confidence, your posture, your figure, how you talk, how you walk, and how you present yourself. Some might look nice, but if you do not carry yourself well, then you have wasted everything. So make sure you're carrying yourself well. Now, these are some considerations. Aside from dressing appropriately for the occasion, there are wedding, wed, excuse me, weather conditions to consider, as well as your age. Do not dress old. Embrace your age and your time. Kai, di mo balik ang oras, di mo balik ang panahon. So enjoy the age that you have and embrace it. When you're young, you can wear happy colors like pink and yellow and red and embrace that. Don't always wear black. Okay, that's kind of for the older people. But again, if that's the color that's your favorite, then embrace it because it's yours. So if you choose to tear or experiment with your style, then have the confidence to own up to what you dare to wear. And never wear something you're not comfortable with because it will show. But most importantly, it always comes down to how you carry yourself. So when it comes to makeup, or how you want to present your face. Accept who you are and what you have. You do not have to change what you were born with, especially since the future is so uncertain. Imagine you get the silicone plastic surgery boobs, and then you go rock climbing. What if the stone will, you know, poke your silicone breast, then suddenly your boob will pop, and then your boobs have deflated on one side. My goodness, what kind of life would you be living? So think about that too, the future. Do you want to really change something and then our skin will sag later in life? Muscles will experience atrophy and then we have other problems that come with age. These are things to consider. The future is so uncertain. It is not in our control. So just be aware of this with any life-changing decision you will make. In my case, this is all natural because as you can see, I live a very outdoorsy life and I want to be able to enjoy life as it comes. So in my case, I embrace life as I am. I embraced who I am and I have learned to enhance what I have through makeup, clothes and a fitness regime. It doesn't even have to be expensive. You can find your style and clothes that suit your body type at places like Ukai Ukai or secondhand places. If the um, new items are too expensive, then don't be afraid to go to places that fit your budget. But most importantly, wear things that you're comfortable with wearing. You don't need to follow the trend or copy someone. Be yourself and find what you love. And again, it's how you carry yourself. When it comes to your face and your features, do you have beauty marks, freckles, dimples, moles, etc.? There are unique markers to define your unique beauty. So embrace them and learn to accentuate them. Learn to love them because these are things that are part of who you are. And in today's age, we have Google, we have books. There are so many resources that you can access to learn more about yourself so that you can glow and be confident with what you have. Now, my secret weapon for all of you, when I say carry yourself well, this has everything to do with your posture. And I want you to try this with me. Your chin up, shoulders back, bust out, stomach in, and don't forget to smile. Because when you smile and it really comes from the heart, then whoever you're talking to, whoever you're meeting, even someone watching you from afar will think, wow, that person is really glowing. And that's what makes you beautiful. This, your posture, it enhances your confidence because wow, like I feel good in my skin about myself. And the secret to all beauty queens is beauty sleep. 
So make sure you can get this because when you have beauty sleep on a scientific level, this is the explanation, there's something called the human growth hormone, HGH. And the only time it is activated in your body is actually when you get to that deep REM sleep. And that's what will regenerate all of your broken cells. It will make new cells. And that's how you get the nice complexion. You have the clear eyes and you're like, wow, I feel like an angel. So don't forget to get your beauty sleep aside from your nice posture. So here are some of my final thoughts. When it comes to beauty, there is no one size fits all. Everyone is unique. And that is what makes everyone so beautiful. Accept your flaws, learn how to manage or live with them, just how I have with mine, and be confident with yourself. Choose a style and a lifestyle that suits your comforts, dreams, and even your aspirations. Never be someone else. Lead the life that you want to live. And just like the Disney princesses, we can see that each one of them has a unique hair color, skin color, eye color, smile. They have unique likes and dislikes. And all of these preferences, all of these characteristics are what makes each one beautiful. So embrace your inner Disney princess, embrace your inner Barbie and just be yourself. So understand your face, your features, your figure, posture and projection. Remember, use your brain and be confident with yourself because the standard of beauty, you can set it according to your terms. You can be any one or anything that you want to be. And how do you develop one self-confidence? Your experiences will shape your way of thinking, your decision-making, your likes and your dislikes, and how you choose to live your life. I wanna have a lifestyle where I'm outdoors all the time. I want to get an education where I'm like legally blonde, Elle Woods, and I can speak up for women and empower them. I want a career in this path because I enjoy this kind of environment. So your choices define you, and you don't need to confine yourself to a stereotype or the norms of society because human beings are complex creatures. We evolve over time. Maybe you liked cotton candy when you were six years old, but as an adult, you prefer bitter chocolate and coffee. So in my case, I consider myself as a master of nothing but a jack of all trades. And that's who I am. So I want you to ask, who are you? Who do you want to be? because you can be anything you want to be. And now I have a little exercise for everyone. Like this picture that you see here on the screen, I want you to give yourself a hug. Just put your arms around you, give yourself a hug and repeat after me. I deeply love and accept myself. And I want you to say it with me. I deeply love and accept myself. I deeply love and accept myself. I deeply love and accept myself. I and say it with conviction. I deeply, deeply love and accept love myself. myself. Exactly. I Whenever deeply love down, and accept myself. <laughs> when you're feeling down, you had a hard day, just give yourself a hug and remind yourself of this, that you deeply love and accept yourself. You have to be confident within your own skin because you have to live with yourself. And trust me, there's a long life ahead. So if you're ever feeling down, just remember to do this. And if you're ever feeling confused, don't be afraid to shoot me a message. I have my own website. You can find me on social media and I'd be happy to lend any advice or any recommendations I could give to help guide you because I know what it's like to be frustrated, to be young and try to outgrow all of these things and embrace who you truly are. So this is my little presentation today and thank you everyone so very much for having me. I always enjoy giving lectures to the future generation because you're the one who will continue the world that we have. So thank you everyone for having me and I am ready for all of your questions if you have any. Thank you so much, Ms. Rain. I, I believe I speak on behalf of all of us when we say that was very inspiring and very fruitful fall and I actually felt goosebumps all over my arm while you were speaking I'm so yeah I I really 
I really admire your advocacies and how you use your platform to make people's lives better. So thank you for that. And I'm sure everyone is excited to ask their questions. But before that, We'll get deeper into the section of the webinar where we'll touch more on the theme for this afternoon, which is once again, embracing feminine diversity, breaking down barriers as a modern day Filipina. So I just want to add on that that lecture was very powerful, Ms. Rain, and I also got goosebumps. Um, yeah, so like um, in the Philippines, it is no doubt that we cannot leave behind pageantry when it comes to popular culture. Um, this had represented a form of femininity or feminism, inspiring young girls or women to show their talents, increase their self-esteem, confidence, and as well as express themselves freely. So it's such a glamorous industry, which I'm sure all of us are dying to know more about. So with that, let us now segue into our question and answer portion. So um, this brings us to our first question this afternoon, Miss Rain. Are you ready? Okay, Miss Rain, you're ready. Okay, so this is my first question. Um, <laughs> What is confidence for you and how did that definition continue to evolve and change throughout the years as you grow and experience different things in your life? So for me, confidence is a total package. It isn't solely determined by your physical looks, but it's also defined by your posture, how you carry yourself, how you walk, and most importantly, the wit that you have and your sense. Because even though you might have a pretty face, if what you're saying has no sense, it doesn't come from the heart and you don't really have any opinion, then there is no laman. So be sure to have something in your head because that's really where your confidence lies. So thank you for sharing that, Ms. Rain. I really agree that confidence isn't just about what you look like. It's really about what's in your mind, what you project to other people. So mm -hmm. social media has put this emphasis on always putting your best appearance forward and striving to be better than who you were. In addition to that, what are your thoughts on glow up culture? It's good sides and it's bad sides. So the funny thing is I never heard about glow up culture until this presentation. So I had to ask my younger brother, Kai Mas Batan Unsha. <laughs> and based on my understanding on his explanation, I will provide a story about myself. In elementary, I was called an ugly duckling and the boys used to stick my hair in the paint. They used to tease me for my haircut, my socks, the way I dressed. And I thought to myself, if I cannot be pretty, then I will just be smart or sporty because these are things within my control. And when I reached high school, you know, you wear braces, your braces are done, your teeth are no longer hiwe. So over time, you know, we evolve as creatures, but my mindset remained the same, that you have to have substance or sport or something, you know, the characteristics that make you you, because this is where you can really gl glow up and be your best self. You have to know who you truly are. So put that phone away and embrace life. Go outside, talk to random strangers, do things that you enjoy, attend events, because this is how you will be more confident when yourself, when you experience life more. Wow, such a wonderful take, Miss Rain. I really like your answer. Um, I would also like to know, um, in a nutshell, how is one able to feel confident in their own skin despite the narrow standards set by the society? Okay, so I have a very simple answer for this. If it makes you sad, why focus your energy on it? It's a waste of your time and your life. Put your attention 
where it's within your control or the things that matter to you. Don't focus your energy on the things that make you sad. Focus on the things that make you happy. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Ms. Rain. Now, before we continue to resume with the next set of questions, we would like to segue first for our mini breather. In this segment, we will do a familiar mini game entitled Guess That Gibberish. Are you familiar with it, Ms. Rain? Okay, so basically this game is just easy. You have to guess the correct word for the gibberish that is presented on the screen. Basically, we will let you guess four words only, and we will give you five seconds to guess each word that will be presented. Okay, are you ready? And for the live audience, are you also ready? <laughs> okay, let's begin. Present the first word in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Woman! What is this phrase? Woman, <laughs> yes. That one was quite easy, I think. <laughs> Just a little warm up. <laughs> okay. Okay, for the second word. Unique. Unique. Unique? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. Woohoo. Okay. Wow. Okay, and now for the third word. In five, four, three, this with this word on screen. I'm power meant. I'm power empowerment. Yes, wow. that's perfect. Miss Rain, you <laughs> the name Miss Rain. <laughs> okay. Um, for the last word. Power, power. <laughs> that's right. I like this game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You answered it all correctly, Miss Rain. And okay. wow. <laughs> and we are back. So thank you for participating in our little intermission. Mm -hmm. And all right, so I hope that made us alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. For those who missed this segment due to some connectivity issues, <laughs> there will be another one later on. So don't worry. And now. Actually, the words that we have presented earlier in the game of guessing the gibberish has something to do with the next set of questions on the subtopic of empowerment and loving oneself. Now, Miss <laughs> Rain, um, yes. was there a time in your life where you have dealt with insecurity and comparison like some of the young girls in this generation who are also struggling and trying to fight with it? And... How does one know when to change and when to remain true to themselves? There are many moments in my life where I feel and have my own insecurities. As you've seen in my lecture, I also have my eczema and pityriasis flares, which are very uncomfortable. But a way that I have learned how to manage them is when the flare is really so bad, I'll wear long sleeves or long pants to shield it so that when I go outside, I don't get someone teasing me for it. When I'm having a bad hair day, then I'll just braid all my hair back. And the reason why I give these examples is because in life, not everything is always in your control. Some days you'll get a pimple on your face, other days you'll have the glowing skin. So if it is within your control, then take control over it and fix it because that's the power that you have. You don't have to live with things that you don't want to live with. If you find that, okay, something is wrong with my skin, I have acne all the time, then do some research to find out how do I fix my skincare routine. If people are teasing you for something, then maybe look online on ways for how you can manage it. So the lesson here is that Take control over the dependent variables and let go of those that aren't. Oh, that's such a great topic. Uh, that's such a great take on the topic, Ms. Serene. Um, I really relate with that because I also dealed with, dealt with um, skin issues and you know people's comments, but I'm really glad and I'm sure a lot of people here are very inspired. They feel like they can put their best for, foot forward out even more now. 
Um, mm. So this next and last question has something to do with the pageantry world. Mm. We know that the beauty industry is not always as glamorous as it appears on the surface. So yeah. competition is unavoidable, especially when bo- booking different jobs. So how can Filipinas in the world of modeling and pageantry uplift each other in such a competitive industry? In my time competing in Miss Cebu, it's a three-month competition. So you really get to know the other contestants. And we're 12 in total, including myself. And during that time, I really just wanted to make friends, get to know everyone, and embrace all of the different things that we learn in that experience. And the, the, even though these are your own personal intentions and these are the things that you want, you still have to keep in mind it's a competition. So what I noticed in sports is that camaraderie exists where people are uplifting each other. When I'm rock climbing, people will be like, woohoo, ale, ale, come on. You know, they'll really cheer you on. And you'll find that too in the beauty pageant industry, but behind the scenes, I have experienced someone stealing my gown. Some of my friends, their makeup artist shaved their eyebrows off. Can you imagine how long it takes for eyebrows to go back? I've also had a friend who experienced her handler being paid under the table to destroy her because someone else paid that handler more money so that this person can win. So there are things that happen behind the scenes that are dangerous, unavoidable, out of your control, and just really scary. But that's life. There are things just outside of your control. And whatever industry you go in, not just in the beauty pageant industry, anywhere in life, the world will be ruthless. But that's why I always emphasize on how experience is so important because that's where you learn how to handle these situations, how to carry yourself with poise and elegance, even though inside you just want to cry and you're so sopwood, but you can't show that because then, you know, you'll be the loser. So from my experiences in my life, you just have to take everything as they come and use your wit wisely for how you will handle that situation. Try to be as prepared as possible, as you most possibly can. Do your research, know yourself, and cherish all of the experiences, good and bad, because they will always have something to teach you. It's amazing to see how you overcame those issues within the industry and I actually didn't know that it was that uh, frightening to join in beauty pageants and become a model because usually we only see what's on the surface we only see the glamour shots and the swimsuits and the national costumes but we never see the true the true cattiness of some people so I'm glad that you handled it well and that you were able to make it through that so um, and connection to 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 that just a little bit, just to add a bit. We see a picture and it's so glamorous and it's so beautiful, but we never know how many people are involved into making that perfect picture happen, what the girl has to go through in order to prepare herself for this one picture. And that's the same with any industry. Maybe you wanna be a public speaker, how much time you have to invest into the research, preparing the presentation, knowing your material, and then you just give that moment, which is less than five minutes or just one second of your time. So that's what makes an expert of their industry an expert. All of those countless hours behind the scenes. So always practice, always prepare. Yes, it requires a lot of dedication, I'm sure, but. Um, if anybody here would like to join pageants, I would say go for it. You know, there's nobody <laughs> holding yourself back but yourself. So, yes. So in connection to this, how then can we uplift women in the upcoming and current generation and at the same time promote unity among women in the 21st century? So in my profession, I actually conduct female empowerment workshops and training seminars in the Philippines, in America, and even in Japan. So based on my professional experience, unity among women is dependent on socio-economic and cultural factors. So for example, in the Philippines, it was the first Asian country where women gained the right to vote. 
Among Asian nations, the Philippines has the number one amount of female CEOs, business owners, and managers. But in countries like Japan, they were the last Asian country for women to gain the right to vote. And no less than 1% of their population are working women. And these, these numbers, these statistics, which you can check online, is based on their norms of their society. So for anything in life, people unite under the same cause because there is a similar purpose for why everyone has to gather. Another example in my life was when I organized the Kusug Sa Subuhanum Dalaga edition, where I invited women of different backgrounds to join me for Cebu's first weightlifting competition specifically for young women. This happened in 2019. And the main audience were girls who were orphans, rescued by nuns from physical and sexual abuse. And I invited women from diverse backgrounds who have really a range of experiences to help me empower these young girls to provide them not just with hope, but learn how to overcome their trauma because the women I invited are older than them, younger than them. They come from different social classes. So they have different experiences to share. So after the competition, we were all talking and we got to share a little bit about ourselves. And when they saw the other girls compete, like, wow, you can lift that? Like, that's so heavy. But that's the thing in with life. It's not just about the physical. It's really the mental. Do you believe in yourself that you can do this? And that's how you carry yourself in your life. So with uplifting women and female empowerment, they all come together for a common cause. And we all have to uplift each other because we guide the next generation. And it always comes down to how much do you believe yourself in yourself can, with conviction, believe in yourself. Yeah. Wow, I learned so much from what you just shared, Miss Rain. It's new to me that uplifting women has also something to do with the cultural and economic context of the country. Mm -hmm. um, very well said. And last but not the least, why do you think pageantry is very big or popular? locally or national nationally is uh wait may I um why do you think pageantry is very big or popular locally or nationally in our country philippines i think this has connection to our history our traditions and our culture because for 500 years the philippines was colonized by the spanish and the spanish at that time was a monarchy and when the queen cannot conceive a child Child, they would hold these beauty pageants to pick who is the most beautiful girl in the kingdom. So with that in mind, this sort of like concept of the most beautiful has somehow transcended through time. Because in today's world, when we see our uncle or our aunt that we haven't seen in a long time, they will tell us, Oi, natambok na ka! Ay, naniwang ka! Hoy! So our tia and our tío, our lola, our lolo, if they don't see us for a long time, the first thing they say has everything to do with our physical attributes. And I really don't know why that is. I really think it has something to do with the historical aspect that I just mentioned. And I just want to say that these are very superficial statements. Don't let it get under your skin. Don't believe in it because these are just opinions and you have your own opinion. In the grand scheme of this big world, there are bigger things happening like the Russian-Ukrainian war, which is affecting trade and commerce and our oil prices are rising and the fate of our country is now dependent on our current president. So, you know, these are bigger things happening. These are bigger things that affect our lives, our livelihood, and how we live our lives. So when someone tells you, Uy, naniwang ka, don't let it get under your skin because there are bigger things happening in the world. Just like the world of pageantry or the world of psychology or the world of engineering, it's its own world in its own respective sectors. And there's such a bigger world out there. So whatever you wanna focus on, that's what you should focus on. 
the beauty queen title is a symbol of status and it has something to do with the discrepancy of our social classes but when you go to another country they admire different things like for japan they really love scientists and people who innovate things in technology if you go to france or italy they really admire artists if you go to australia they love people who are strong who are in the mining industry so if you don't fit in this area go somewhere where you fit in. You don't have to be stuck where you are. There's a big world out there. The Philippines has more than 7,000 islands. Explore the world, explore who you are and be what you want to be. Wow, can I just say your thoughts are very beautiful, Miss Rain. Simply amazing. <laughs> um, I'm sure that everyone right now is inspired. I can say that we have just covered an important and timely topic. But before we all end this segment, let's head on to the last mini game. Marian, would okay. you care to facilitate? Sure, I would love to. So, so this mini game is intended for our speaker, but anyone can also join in the chat box. So, Miss Rain, the mini game is called Save One, Drop One. The rules are simple. You just need to pick only one from the choices that are to be presented, and not both. <laughs> there will only be six rounds and only three seconds to choose. So, Miss Rain, are you ready? Yes! Okay, let's start. Okay. <laughs> the first choice. Waking up early or staying up late? Early! <laughs> Second choice, brains or beauty? Brains. Yes, okay. The third, dresses or tees? Dresses. Or casual dress? Could you repeat that, please? Formal or casual? Oh, casual dress. <laughs> um, skinny jeans or mom jeans? Mom jeans. As they're way comfier. Okay, last question. Books or movies? Books. Okay. So that was all for our questions. I will now uh, hand you over to Clancy. Okay, that was fun. Um, I really agree with your choices, Miss Rain, especially on the mom jeans portion. <laughs> <laughs> they're really comfy. Um, with that, let us move on to our open forum. To everyone here, you may now start to type your questions or curiosities in the chat box. But if you are a brave soul or you have a brave soul, you can unmute your mic. So our yeah, open forum <laughs> starts now. Hello, Miss Rain. Good Hi. Afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Rain. Um, he looks absolutely stunning today. <laughs> Thank you. What's your name? Uh, my name is Ren. Hi, Ren. Uh, so, my question, Ms. Ren, is could you tell me about your philosophy in life and what you value most in life? Oh, my philosophy in life. Well, I strongly believe that life is to be lived and experienced. So you have to really put all your fears away, like gather all the courage that you have and live the life that you want to lead because life is so fragile and precious. Thank you, Miss Rain. Thank you, Ren. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh uh, my, my name is uh, Lamberto Mejera Fisia III. Uh, I'd like to say too that you two are very stunning too. I mean, we can all agree you're very stunning. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to ask, uh, what are your thoughts of Filipinos? Like the Filipino, the Filipino people, their thoughts on foreigners? Like for what your perspective? How do oh, we I like your question. 
Oh, Lamberto, you know, bisaya ra jud ko, taga Cebu jud ko. Pero inig adto ko sa gawas ang mga tawo mo tan-aw nako na on musuti sila. Ay, lahi jud ka. Unsay mong lahi? Ay, taga asa ka. And I really feel like, you know, why do you ask me this? I'm so Filipino inside. Like I eat dinuguan <laughs> and even my own inahan does not eat dinuguan. Anyway, to answer your question, I'll give you a funny story yesterday. My charger of my laptop broke and I was really panicking because how am I going to give this lecture today? So I called up more than 15 different computer stores asking them, do you have a charger for this kind of laptop? And one of them answered and they told me, yes, we have one. And they told me it's original. So I go to their computer shop in Ayala. And when I arrived there, I looked at the charger and I looked at my charger and I realized this is not original. This is a copy. And the sukot jud ko kay kanang inig istorya ko sa telefono. Like klaro ka ayo medyo slang ako bisaya. So you can really tell that ah, you know, this person is not really Filipino. And the price that they gave me was the price of an original, which is four thousand seven hundred pesos. And on Shopee for the fake charger, it's only 800 to 1,200 pesos. So I was really frustrated. You're overcharging me. You're giving me a fake charger. Like, this is kind of wasting my time because I, Naiko Bahatun, you know, I have things to do in my day. So to, to, to cut the story now shorter, the story shorter, um, I really don't know what Filipinos think of me, but what I think of them depends who I'm talking to. Obviously, yesterday I was very frustrated because they're trying to cheat me. In the end, I only paid 2,500 and I went to a different store to get a charger. So that's why I'm able to have this lecture today, no problem. But um, I've met Filipinos who really welcome me into their home and they give me lechon and I eat the puso with them and lipay kay ko. Kay, you know, they don't think of me as different. So. When it comes to people, not just in the Philippines, anywhere, there are people who will like you, who will dislike you, people who will cheat you, people who will really just be nice to you and honest. So when it comes to my perception of Filipinos, I love them because I am one. But sometimes you just meet good and bad people. Okay. All right. Thank you. What a wonderful story. Thank you, Lamberto. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. <laughs> You do. Another question here from Julia. Yes. Uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts on the lack of diversity from the modeling and beauty industry? So, in my mother's time and her sister's time, which was the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They were also models and beauty queens. And my grandmother and my great-grandmother are also beauty queens and models. So I am the fourth generation in my family. And the stories that they tell me was, you know, during their time, plastic surgery did not exist. You are born with what you have. You have to embrace what you have. And you just have to flaunt it. So, you know, ang babay na ay kulot sa ilang buhok, na ay babay, you know, like really dark morena skin. They're so golden brown. And then there are some women also born with white skin and straight hair. And when you attend these beauty pageants or the fashion shows, you really see each unique beauty. But the one thing that all of these women have in common is that they're confident. They just embrace what they have. And for me, that's what makes the generation of my mom and the older generation more fun because everyone was just their unique God-given self. But in today's time, when I watch these competitions, like the Miss Universe lately, I'm really thinking, you know, this country kind of looks like this country. They kind of look the same. Are they sisters? But they're not sisters. Kind of, they're from different countries. And I see that here in the Philippines too. So in my opinion about the industry today, it's really evolved. And I don't know why it has evolved the way it has, but I hope that the times will evolve again and mabalik ta sa panahon sa akong lola or akong inahan where women just flaunted themselves confidently and embraced what they have because that's the true beauty when you're confident with yourself and you accept yourself and what you have. I think there's a second question. Would one of the hosts like to read it to me? Um, I'll read it. Um, 
are you going to start your own YouTube channel, Miss Rain? Because you seem so confident. She says she likes your energy. Thank you, Julia. I can only be myself. And I'm kind of weird sometimes in my own unique way. Um, I actually do have my own YouTube channel, but it's been active and inactive you know, like it kind of goes through its phases because Usahai, you know, I'm so busy ju juggling my trabajo and my studies. So maybe I will upload more in the future, maybe in the close future. Why don't you send me a message? Give me some ideas of what to talk about. This, I will share a link to my existing YouTube channel. And if you have suggestions of the type of videos that I should make or the type of content you want to see, then please Talk to me and give me your ideas because I would love to hear some of your feedback too. Wow. Uh, so you guys, if you have any ideas. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Miss Rain. Hi, who is this? Uh, my name's uh, Daniel Velas. Hi, Daniel. Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to say very very beautiful. You look very beautiful today. Ay, buyag! Diwat sa inahan! Salamat! So, I just want to ask, um, what's uh, what's life like in Australia like, that really like, uh, that you would wish, like, prefer Australia over Philippines? Oh, no! Karun, na ako sa Cebu! <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, to give you a little story, I was born in Australia, and I left when I was two years old and two months. And since then, I have spent my whole life mostly in the Philippines, but sometimes in Hong Kong or Thailand because of my parents' business, but just for like the summer and winter of vacation. And then during the pandemic, I was living and working in Japan. So I learned Japanese while I was there and I got to understand the difference of their like societal norms compared to in the Philippines. But right now I'm back in Cebu and from all of the different places that I've been to in the world, every country is so unique in its own way. And there is always something we can learn from someone else. As long as we are observant, we are aware, not just of ourselves, of other people, and we respect the differences that everyone has. So if you're asking me what I prefer, it will, you know, some days I like this, some days I don't like this. So we're just evolving creatures on this planet and we should embrace all of life. Uh, that's, that's great. That's amazing, man. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, wow. <laughs> um, Miss Rain, I have, I, think we can do I have received a special question from our um from our professor, Sir um, Sir Ian Max. Um, according to the Vice President elect Sara Duterte, that local government units should stop holding pageantry because it's a waste of government's money. So um what are your thoughts on this or what is your take on this okay first of all i just want to say hi sir max i really miss our philippine pop culture classes together because sir max is really one of the funnest and coolest teachers that cdu has so i'm so happy that napasa naapasha sa cdu so hi sir um to answer this question so this is actually not the first time where a government official wants to abolish beauty pageants. When I was crowned Miss Cebu 2016 in January, in May, we had a new mayor. And that mayor, at the, the new one, uh, Mayor Osmania at the time, he abolished the Miss Cebu pageant. And so I have ended up, my title ended up evolving to the longest reigning Miss Cebu because it was just this year when Mayor Mike Rama came back where he decided to give a rebirth to the Miss Cebu pageant. And the reasons for why Mayor Osmania abolished it are actually the same as Vice President Sara Duterte, where it's a waste of government money. Now, in my personal opinion, when it comes to beauty pageants, 
although women are confident and they're a sex symbol, it's also an entertainment industry and it helps lighten up life. When you look at these girls, somehow you feel inspired and you're in awe. There's someone that you look up to you up to and you want to emulate. And at the same time, in my case at least, Miss Cebu was representing the Cebu City Tourism Commission. So it was affiliated to the government and I had a role with the tourism sector. So I was actually trained to be a tour guide for all of the delegates that came from international countries. And that's what I love most about the pageant. And that's why I only joined Miss Cebu. I never joined a pageant before it or after it. So when I won, I was so happy and I was so grateful because for me, it was really a dream come true. And now when I see pageants, they've kind of evolved from that original place. You know, some pageants are from the private sector. Some pageants are, they have different purpose for why they exist. So if the pageant is affiliated to the government, then I hope that they will have some role representing the government with honor, class, and dignity. But if the pageant is created for a different purpose, then that doesn't need to be affiliated to the government. So in regards to Vice President Sara Duterte's opinion, we really have to think, is this someone who can represent our government well and take an active role in the government? Or is it something that it really, well, I labot ne, or it doesn't need to be a part, then maybe private sector can handle it. So that's my stance, sir. Max, thank you for your question. <laughs> Okay, maybe we can have two more questions. If, okay, we have one. Uh, Miss Rain, do you have yes. plans in joining national pageants in the future, like Binibining Pilipinas or Miss Universe? Oh, you know, I'm still 25, so I still have a future ahead. And in that future, we never know what can happen. That's, That's very answer. true. <laughs> okay, uh, one more question. Any brave souls here? <laughs> Yes, guys. Yeah, come yes. on, guys. Confidence. Yes. Don't be afraid. Yes. <laughs> and turn on your mic if you want. Last to. chance, guys. <laughs> yes. I can't bite even if I wanted to because, you know, it's all digital now. <laughs> it's a really bad joke. <laughs> okay, we have our, our last question from Danielle. What was it like living in Japan? So the whole world went on a lockdown and everything was closed in the country. They did a liquor ban. The, the businesses weren't allowed to operate. And I think the Philippines gained the title of the world's longest lockdown. And then in countries like America and continents like Europe, they were too stubborn to wear their masks. But in Japan, what I learned was that they have a different perception than the rest of the world. They believe that we need to follow the advice and we need to put our trust in these officials because we elected them. And based on that advice, if I follow it, it is my social responsibility for the benefit of our entire nation. So it's a very like, not just me, myself and I, but it's me, myself and all of us. And that was something that I really admired and appreciated that I got to experience and learn from. So everyone would be wearing masks. All of the businesses had this giant monitor that can scan your temperature when you walk in a building and you get your alcohol spray. And all of the businesses were operating normally, public transportation operating normally. The only difference was that you wear a mask. And if you're feeling sick, stay home. Don't infect anyone, be responsible. And the reason why Japan operated like this during the pandemic was because they believe that this pandemic is something out of our control. We know that it exists, but life still goes on. And that was something that I really admired from them. And I'm so grateful that I got to learn from them. So I hope that I got to share what I have learned with you and maybe you will like it too. Um, learning the Japanese language is not as hard as it seems as long as you are persevering. And that's the same with anything you choose to learn in life. So whatever you choose, really put your heart and soul into it and commit all the way.
And yes, kanji is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ms. Rain. I think that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, everyone, for your wonderful questions. So now, may I ask everyone to turn their cameras on as we will be having our picture taking. Yay! Okay, guys, please um, prepare yourselves. I will be the one to take the picture, by the way. Sir Max, are you gonna turn on your camera? Let's see, Sir Max, too. Yes, yes. Everyone, wait, wait, come wait. on. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. One, two, three, smile. Okay, another one. One, two, three, smile. Like. and interactive learning so thank you everyone <laughs> okay um so now at this portion before anything else the hosts as well as the rest of the ab psychology level one students would like to present a certificate to our guest speaker miss rain baljak okay okay here it is Yay, okay. So the Certificate of Appreciation thereby hereby awarded to Ms. Rain Baljak for imparting her knowledge and experiences in her career and for giving inspiration to the first year psychology students at Cebu Doctors University. Given this 28th day of May 2022. Okay. Yay. So thank you. Thank you, Miss Rain. What about okay. the photo op? Um I think we had it already a while ago. Uh, I wasn't ready yet. Uh, okay. Um Miss Rain, would you be willing to do another another pictorial? Sure. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, thank you. No problem. Make sure you're ready, huh? Fix the hair. <laughs> Okay. And two, three. Okay, just waiting for everyone to get ready. Take two, take two, make sure everyone's in the picture. Thank you so much to our hosts for your understanding. Okay. And to all of the students. All right, three, two, one, smile. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank, thank, thank you, everyone. So now we are approaching the end of this afternoon's webinar, but we are with shimmers and sparkles. Very thankful.